Alright, what's going on guys? So since game animation sample just got updated to 5.5, it's only right that I do an integration video of Combat Fury. Alright, this video is going to be basically just the bare bones of everything. We're not going to go into how to add your animations and stuff like that. I've made plenty of videos on Combat Fury, so if you want to see the full process, I suggest you go watch this video right here. I'll link it in the description. Alright, cool. So with all of that said, let's get started with a brand new project of game animation sample in 5.5. Alright, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is if you haven't downloaded 5.5 yet download 5.5 and if you haven't deleted your game animation sample from your local content you have to remove it from your local content first so you click on remove so i'll do that right now just to show you so i'm just going to click on remove content and it will remove it and you click on create project again and you change this version from 5.4 to 5.5 and let's just change this name and let's create the project okay that's done now so we're going to open up combat fury and migrate it to the project we're just going to migrate all of the content from Combat Fury and put it into our new project. And now we can open up our new project. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to edit and go to project settings, search for trace channel. And we have a new trace channel here called traversable. We're going to add a new trace channel in here and call it hitbox trace accept and close out of that and now let's go to the content browser go to combat fury data assets third person bp blueprints and open up the third person character and we also want to go to blueprints and open up the sandbox character okay so we're gonna be migrating all of this logic and components and blueprints into the sandbox character but you might want to create a child of this or maybe put it into one of the retargeted characters or retarget a new character and put it in there because since game animation sample is going to be be updated for every major release of unreal engine then it might be a good idea to not actually put the logic in the main sandbox character blueprint but just for this video i'm going to just do it like this if we go back to the third person character now we need to grab all of these components from peri system to qte copy all of these and paste them into the sandbox character go back to the third person character and copy the set blocking movement and paste it into here and we want to right click on is blocking and create a variable and now go back to the third person character and copy the hold pressed paste it in to the sandbox character drag out of the sequencer search for retarget uh, retargetable delay connect complete to enter connect the held time to uh, duration and go back to the sandbox character and copy can block and paste that into there too. We can exit out of all of these tabs now. Now in your sandbox character, go to sandbox self, the root, search for tags in the details panel and add a new actor tag. And this is going to be called player. You can exit out the, the tags now and then go to mesh and open up the skeletal mesh asset, the UEF and mannequin. Then go to the third person character, go to mesh and open up the SK mannequin. In the SK mannequin, click on this button here, this icon, this gear icon, select show all sockets and also click on it again and select hide bones and this will give us all of the sockets that we need to copy onto our UEFN mannequin so just copy all of these sockets grab all of them so we've got the second holster holster second weapon holster weapon tip sword impact and sword socket copy all of these and paste them into your UEFN mannequin we can next set out both of these now now in your sandbox character blueprint I'm going to create a new graph and call it CF and this is going to be for all of our blueprints we're going to copy all of these blueprints into here so let's go to the first person character go to event we're going to drag this default inputs down like this grab this plate montage event and we can copy all of this stuff and paste it into our sandbox character go back to the third person character go to hits and parries copy all of this blueprint and paste it over here and go to combat graph copy all of this paste but we need to do some fixes right here. So what we're going to do is grab the hold pressed macro, place it into here, put the press into press, release into then zero, held into the air combo launch and tapped into the set combo input. The held time, we can put it as 0.2 seconds and then we can copy this and paste it over here. This is for our light attacks and special attacks and uh, projectile attacks. So we can put the press into press, release into then zero, held into the special attack and tapped into is player strafing branch. So that's done. Go back to the third person character, go to dodge graph, copy all of this 
paste it down here in your sandbox character and what we're going to do is right click on forward value create a variable and the same thing for right value create a variable and for the dodge and roll we can put the macro held pressed in here but the roll doesn't work very well in in game animation sample though i haven't tried it with this project but i still have a feeling that it probably still won't work very well so what i like to do instead is i just like to delete all of this code over here because we're never going to need it and just connect this together like this another thing that we can do before i move on we can go to the ac skill system and open up the mobility skills and we can delete the role so here's the role right here we can just delete this we don't need it let's go back to the third person character go to lock on graph copy all of this and paste it down here too now for the move forward and move right input i'm just going to do the same thing that i've always done and I'm going to add feature or content pack grab the third person character add it to the project and then go to edit project settings go to input access mapping and then in move forward and backwards delete backwards and delete any spaces so we just have move forward and do the same thing for move right now we can compile and everything is pretty much done here. Let's move on to the animation blueprint. So click on the mesh and browse to the animation blueprint, the anim class. We can open this up and do the same thing in the third person character. Click on mesh, browse to the anim class and open up the animation blueprint. In the third person anim blueprint, go to the event graph, drag these two out a little bit because all we need is this. So all we need is the try get pawn owner is valid, get component class is valid, get weapon state, weapon state. That's all we need. Go to the ABP sandbox character animation blueprint. And what we're going to do is create a new function here. I'm going to call it vers or variables. And then just connect this up like this. We want to right click on weapon state and create a variable of it. And then right click on this graph and search for sandbox character, get sandbox character and also drag out of this and search for is blocking and create this, promote this to a variable, connect it up like this. And that's done. We can go to the event graph now and we want to grab that new function, drag it out and plug it into the update logic. Compile, save, go back to the third person ABP, go to the anim graph and we want to copy all of this from sword state, unarmed state, switch state and final pose. Copy it all, go to the ABP sandbox character and in animation layers, we want to create a new layer here, call it overlays. And then in inputs with this highlighted, go to inputs and create a new input, drag out of input, search for save, cage pose call it main pose and then you want to paste blueprint into here we can delete the default slot and just connect the layered blend pose to the output pose and for the is blocking we need to replace these with the is blocking that we created in this blueprint and now finally we can go to the animation graph find where we have the default slot right here drag all of this out then grab our overlays and paste it in just like this okay so we have one final thing that we need to do but we can exit out of all of this now so the last thing that we need to do is go to the world settings so if you don't see it windows world settings go to selected game mode and then for the player controller class you want to browse to this pc sandbox browse to it and open it up let's dock it over here now we can change this to pc easy combo buffering and browse to this too and open this up and now all we need to do is just copy all of this code and paste it into the sandbox character. Just paste it like this. Compile, save, and back in our world settings, just change this back to PC sandbox. Click on save and let's test this out. And that's it. So there are some other things that we kind of need to do to make sure that the project is running smoothly. You can watch that video that I've linked in the description just so you can have the best project possible but i'll just show you some things that you need to do so if you go back into the sandbox character and go to the spring arm you're going to want to enable camera rotation lag and change both of these to something like eight and also go to peri system right click on peri system edit peri system and then go to can execute finisher question mark in range float you want to change it from minus five to minus 50 and 5.0 to 50 
compile save also one more last thing this is pretty new so i do tend to forget this now but you want to also go to ac hitbox and change this trace channel from traversable to hitbox trace compile save and you're gonna need to do the exact same thing here to our enemy ai so go to combat fury you see assets characters open up the bp enemy base go to hitbox and change this from traversable to hitbox trace save and we can drag this into the scene now keep in mind that we don't have a nav mesh so we can add a nav mesh if we want but i'm not going to i'll just leave it One more thing that I'm going to quickly do is go back to the sandbox character in strafe. We can change this input to a different input, but I'm just going to get rid of it because our strafing on and our lock on are the same input. So that's pretty much it. If you're new to this project, you're probably wondering why do the animations look so weird? All you need to do is just retarget all of these animations to the UEFN. Click on this button and click on animation sequence and montage and just copy all of these, export these animations and we can just make a new folder in here, export them. So I'm only going to change some things here because I don't want to go through and change everything. As I said, you guys can go watch my other videos if you want to learn how to get the best out of this project. But for me, I'm just going to change the attacks. So I'll just change these attacks and it's pretty simple. Just change these to, to this. But if you have your own attack animations, then you would want to change them to your own attack animations. But you also need to copy the notifiers from these attacks too. Which again, watch my other videos if you want to learn how to do that and make it look good. Okay. So as you can see, the animations are now working perfectly fine. That's going to be it. Hopefully you liked the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.